Hi, Pete from Latchmere here. I've had a lot of people asking me about how I made the third rail sparks, so here's a little tutorial. You're going to need some reed switches which can fit in between the sleepers without touching the rail either side and you're going to need some LEDs and because we are DC and we are powering this from the rails we're using 12 volt LEDs. These ones are cool white and super bright. You're going to need three bits of wire, not very long, a bit like this. There we go. And then we're going to drill a hole there, a hole there, a hole there and a slightly larger hole there for the LED. Then put a blob of solder on the outside of each of the rails, not on the inside or the flanges hit. And it's important you know exactly where your third rail is going to go because the LED needs to be on the same side. So we're starting on the side without the LED and we feed the wire down through the hole and we're then gonna solder that wire already tinned to the rail there. You can file off any excess later on. Feed it back up through the second hole because that's now going to attach to your reed switch. Now your reed switch you've got to bend, do it so carefully between your finger and thumb, they are glass, they do shatter, and make sure those blades are facing upwards, okay? They're nice and flat, that's a side view there, you want the flat blade upwards so the magnet can pull them together and that's how a reed switch will operate. Solder the reed switch to it, go careful, don't burn your fingers. Um, <laughs> and then get the other piece of wire, tin that up, and that piece of wire is going to go on the other side of the reed switch. Then feed that wire down through the next hole closest to the rail that's closest to us. Very, very carefully and equally, pulling underneath gently and pushing from above, feed the wires down so the reed switch lays flat between the sleepers. Then take that wire, the last one you soldered on, and feed it up from underneath through the existing hole, the one closest to us, right by the rail. That's where the LED is going to be, right by the third rail, under the third rail there. And then turn your controller on so the track is live and make sure that it's on forwards. So it's going to work in that direction only. Now it's time to test the polarity. LEDs only work in one direction, so test it across the track, get it the right way round to make sure you solder it to the right wires so that it's the right direction and actually works. Carefully tin the legs of the LED, don't put too much heat through them, otherwise they will burn out, they are a component, so go careful. And then connecting the leg that went to the furthest rail to make it light, connect that to the wire that's sticking out because that comes from the furthest rail and then take that other piece of wire. So the first thing you're going to do with this new, this last piece of wire is feed it down through the hole and then you're going to solder one end of it to the rail. Once you've done that, you're then going to solder the other end once you've bent it all the way back up through that hole to the other leg of the LED. Like so, there we go. So that's now all wired in insulate the legs or just make sure they're very different lengths and then test it with a magnet first before you put everything under the rail there we go because the magnet's going to attach to the chassis of your electric unit or class 73 class 92 you name it anything electrical here's how i've done it with the hap unit they're neodymium magnets they're about one millimeter thick they're very very powerful and very strong you can get them off ebay and various places you can weather the track, you can weather the reed switch to a small degree. Getting the height right, getting the magnets in the right place, I'll leave that to you. It's a bit of fettling, but it gives you effects like this. It's fantastic. Enjoy.